Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our sixth lesson on the fifth topic of Ongo, which is called electromagnetic induction. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that, provided that you keep improving on a daily basis, the only thing that separates you from success is time. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So remember from our previous classes, we were looking at the applications of electromagnetic induction and our first application was in transformers, whereby we looked at the different types of transformers, for example, the step up and the step down transformers. So today we're looking at the second application of electromagnetic induction. So the second application is in moving coil microphone. Remember the moving coil microphone are simply the usual microphones that you use in the public address systems. So the main features of a moving coil microphone, one is that it has the diaphragm. Remember the diaphragm is usually flexible, therefore it can move to and fro whenever uh, some sound waves are incident on it. So the moving coil microphone also has a magnet with the radial magnetic fields. So you can see we have a North Pole here, then we have a South Pole here. So these are what we are calling the radial magnetic field lines, which are placed in such a way that as the uh, coil vibrates, it actually cuts the magnetic field lines at an angle of 90 degrees, such that the maximum EMF or the maximum uh, magnetic flux will actually be induced in these particular coils. So it also has some coil, which is usually attached to the diaphragm, such that as the diaphragm vibrates to and fro, that is when it receives some sound waves, it also causes the coil to also vibrate to and fro within a magnetic field, hence some EMF will be induced in that particular uh, coil. Then we also talk of um, uh, the, that is the moving coil microphone, it is used to convert sound energy to electrical energy. And the reason why we convert the sound energy to electrical energy in a moving coil microphone the main purpose is so that we can actually magnify that particular sound energy so that it can be heard by a large, that is by a crowd of people. Then when a person speaks into the microphone, so when you speak into the microphone, remember uh, your speech actually produces what we call the sound waves. So when you speak, you are producing the sound waves. So your sound waves will cause the diaphragm within the moving coil microphone to start vibrating. So when uh, that is when a person speaks into the microphone, the sound wave uh, set the diaphragm into vibration. And remember the coil is usually attached to this particular diaphragm. So that as the diaphragm vibrates, that is whenever it receives the sound waves, as the diaphragm vibrates, also these particular coils, uh, this particular coil also vibrates. Then remember the coil is placed within a magnetic field. So as the coil vibrates, it actually vibrates within a magnetic field such that it cuts the magnetic fields at right angles or at an angle of 90 degrees. And whenever a conductor or the coil cuts the magnetic field at an angle of 90 degrees, then we expect some uh, EMF to be induced in this particular uh, coil. So when a person speaks into the microphone, the sound waves uh, set the diaphragm into vibration causing the coil to move to and fro. So the, mo the coil moves uh, to the left and to the right, that is it moves to and fro, uh, that is cutting the magnetic field because you can see we have the radial magnetic field which are actually placed in such a way that as the uh, coil vibrates to and fro, it actually cuts the magnetic uh, field lines at an angle of 90. So the magnetic field is radial so that uh, the motion of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field ensuring that there is maximum flux linkage and therefore that simply means that maximum EMF is going to be induced in this particular coil. And because the sound wave is actually varying, it simply means that the EMF that will be induced, it will actually be varying. So it is in form of a, that is alternating current. That is why you can see the graph of induced, e induced current or induced EMF and time is actually sinusoidal. That is uh, actually the graph is actually varying. That is the induced current. It varies with time because remember the diaphragm is actually vibrating. So the coil moves to and fro. Therefore, there are going to be regions whereby maximum current is being induced. Then there are going to be region of zero uh, induction of the current. Then again, 
another region of maximum induction of current in the opposite direction and so on and so forth so the graph of induced current against time in seconds will actually be in form of a sine wave so uh, when a person speaks into the uh, microphone so the sound wave set the diaphragm into vibration causing the coil to move to and fro cutting the magnetic field at an angle of 90 degrees so the magnetic field is usually radial so that the motion of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field ensuring that there is maximum flux linkage or that there is maximum emf that is being induced in this particular coil then you are saying that the emf is varying because also when you speak the sound waves are actually varying because the sound comes to be louder in some cases it is actually uh, soft that is whenever you pause maybe your speech so uh, this induces an emf or a current of varying magnitude which sets up uh, a uh, varying current that is AC in the coil. So uh, the AC of course will be induced in this particular coil or the uh, the current or the EMF will be induced in this particular coil and that particular current or the AC current uh, which is induced in the coil which which uh, will flow to the loudspeaker where it is amplified uh, and then converted back to sound wave. Remember uh, after when the sound or the when the e induced uh, alternating current is induced in this particular coil it is actually taken back to a loudspeaker so remember the loudspeaker also is usually curved it also has a diaphragm of course which is also connected to these particular coils such that the alternating current actually causes the, the diaphragm of uh, the external speaker to actually vibrate remember when the uh, diaphragm of the external speaker vibrates uh, then the diaphragm is made in such a way that it traps some air in between it such that as the diaphragm vibrates, it actually sets the air into vibration. Remember, when an object is set into vibration, actually a sound will be produced. But because the diaphragm of that particular speaker also traps a huge amount of air, it means that more air is set into vibration. Therefore, the sound that will be produced, it will actually be amplified because more amount of air is actually set into vibration. Therefore, more sound will be transmitted. Uh, from that particular loudspeaker. So if you observe large speakers, you realize that they usually have some small holes. Uh, then uh, inside there is a region that is hollow, uh, such that we have the diaphragm, then of course we have that region which is hollow. So the purpose of that hollow region and the small, uh, that is the small holes on the speaker, the small hole simply ensures that the air is actually trapped into that particular diaphragm and when more air is trapped into the, into, the, into the diaphragm it simply means that more air will be set into vibration hence the sound produced will actually be uh, loud so the induced emf of varying magnitude which sets up the varying current or the ac in the coil uh, which flows to the loudspeaker where it is uh, where it is amplified and converted back to the sound wave that are, can actually be detected by the human ear next we look at the third application of electromagnetic induction which is in an induction coil so the main features of the induction coil is that it has soft iron rods or which simply form the soft iron uh, core which are simply a uh, rods or a core that can easily be magnetized and demagnetized it also has the primary coil which usually has fewer turns as compared to the number of turns in the secondary coil so you can see our primary coil is the one in color blue so you can see it has very few turns uh, as compared to the number of turns in the secondary coil so our secondary coil is the one in color green and you can see that it has more number of turns as compared to the number of turns that are present in the primary coil so the reason why the secondary coil has more turns is that so that more emf can actually be induced in that particular secondary coil to help us produce the spark at the top end here it also has the soft iron armature which is actually a magnetic material that can easily be uh, attracted then it also has some spring which is simply a return spring we also have some contacts of course it has a capacitor and a direct current source and of course a switch for that is closing and opening the circuit so an induction coil it is a step up transformer that uses direct current and not alternating current so you can be asked to give the difference between an induction coil and a step up transformer remember 
for all types of transformers we said that they strictly work on alternating current so the main difference between an induction coil and a step-up transformer is that uh, a step-up transformer uses that is a step uh, that is an induction coil it uses direct current but an uh, a step-up transformer is strictly uses an alternating current so that is the difference between induction coil and a step-up transformer remember we are saying that an induction coil is a step-up transformer because it has more number of turns in the secondary coil as compared to the primary coil so that simply means that the output uh, potential difference or the output emf will actually be more as compared to uh, that is the emf actually in the primary coil so uh, it contains two coils which are wound on a soft iron uh, rods or the soft iron core so you can see both our primary coil and the secondary coil are actually wound on soft iron rods or on the soft iron core so the primary coil is connected to a direct current source so you can see these are our direct current source then the primary coil which is actually in color blue is actually connected to this particular direct current source then uh, a change in current in the primary coil or the primary circuit due to the make and break of the a circuit induces uh, a large emf in the secondary coil so remember when you close this particular switch here actually the direct current source is going to supply current through this particular primary coil under a given topic in form 2 which was called a uh, magnetic effect of the electric current we did say that a conductor carrying current has a magnetic field around it therefore when we close this particular switch the current that will be flowing through this particular primary coil will cause the soft iron rods to actually get magnetized or the soft iron core will be magnetized whenever some current flows through this particular primary coil now when the soft iron rods get magnetized they are going to attract the soft iron armature so when the soft iron armature is attracted uh, to the magnetized soft iron rods it is going to break this particular conduct here so once it breaks the contact, it means now the circuit again is open or the current is not flowing through the primary coil. When the current is not flowing through the primary coil, actually uh, the soft iron armature is going to return back because we have our, our spring here which returns it back. Remember the soft iron armature was attracted on the soft iron rods because they have been magnetized. But when they get attracted to the soft iron uh, rods, it actually the soft iron armature it breaks this particular conduct when the conduct is broken the current no longer flows through uh, the primary coil therefore the soft iron rods they lose their magnetism once they lose their magnetism the return spring returns the soft iron armature back to its position hence again the circuit is now complete and the current flows through the soft iron uh, that is it flows through the primary coil and again the soft iron rods get magnetized it attracts the soft iron armature uh, breaking this particular conductor so if the conduct is broken again the supply of current in the primary coil is cut off the soft iron rod loses the magnetism then again it releases uh, or the return spring uh, returns the soft iron armature into its position so this process will go on that is the process of uh, the magnetization and demagnetization of the uh, soft iron rods so remember that continuous magnetization and demagnetization or the continuous make and break of the circuit in the primary coil will cause induction of the emf in that particular secondary coil because we are having what we are calling mutual induction so a change in the current in the primary circuit due to the make and break of the circuit so remember we, we are having here the make and break of this particular circuit such that when the current flows through the soft iron uh, that is the primary coil the soft iron rods get magnetized they attract the soft iron armature which breaks the contact here so once the contact is broken again the current supply in the primary coil is cut off the soft iron rod gets demagnetized then the soft iron armature returns back making the contact so we are going to have continuous make and break uh, of that particular current in the primary coil so the make and break of the current in the of the current in the primary coil is going to cause a huge induction of uh, some emf in the secondary coil using uh, mutual induction 
So a change in current in the primary coil or the primary circuit due to the make and break of the circuit induces a large EMF in the secondary coil. So which has many number of turns, of course, as we saw earlier. Then a spark is produced at the gap between the ends of the secondary coil. So that induced EMF will cause a spark to be produced at this particular end of this particular secondary coils. So that spark is very important because uh, the spark is produced at the gap between the ends of the secondary coil. So that spark can be used to ignite petrol vapor mixture in a car engine to enable the car to actually start moving. So the importance of the spark is simply uh, it can be used to ignite the petrol vapor mixture in a car engine enabling the vehicle to actually start moving. Then you can also be asked to state the role of the capacitor in an induction coil whereby you are saying that the capacitor in this particular circuit helps to reduce sparking at the contacts. Remember at this particular conduct due to make and break we might have some sparks huh, forming at this particular conduct. So you can see the capacitor, this is our capacitor which is actually placed uh, in parallel to our conduct. So the capacitor is placed closer to the conduct to actually reduce sparking at the contacts because you don't need sparks here. Instead, we need sparks at this particular top end to help us to uh, ignite the petrol vapor mixture in a car engine to enable the car to start actually moving. So the role of the capacitor in an induction coil is actually to reduce sparking at the contacts. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that, provided that you keep improving on your daily basis, uh, that is provided that you keep improving on a daily basis, the only thing that separates you from success is time. So the quote is informing us that the easiest way of accomplishing a huge task is by first of all breaking it down into smaller daily manageable objectives. Remember that the compound interest of well-achieved daily objectives is actually massive success or achieving your huge goal. And lastly, recall that in order for you to live a fulfilled life, you need to invest in yourself, you need to expect no handouts from anyone, and you also need to be willing to work your way to the top without being helped by uh, most people. That is, it is simply warning us against uh, too much depending on other people. We should try to be independent. We should try to achieve things on our own. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.